Hello, this is a talk on Perl programming on Windows. So let's start with first you need to install Perl. You can install Perl 5 from with Sigwin or Strawberry Perl or DWM Perl. You just Google it and find it. So let's say dir. So suppose you install it and you open a Windows console, you get this files and then we'll use a test file, text file. Say type that is a cat. So you have four lines in the file. This is a test. Now the first use of Perl is to use it like a grep. What that means is how to use it? Say Perl minus any. This is the options. Any means n means loop over all the lines one by one. E means execute the expression that follows. And the arguments are star dot txt. So this is the expression the program Perl program being executed on these lines, all these files. The files will be globbed in the current directory, and there's only one file test.txt. So it works like a simple grep. So what happens is, and what is it saying? Print if, and this is a regular expression, and it says between the slash slash. That means if the line matches li any, it will print it. The action is print. So the first and the fourth line match. So you get two lines as output. That's an example of using Perl as a grep. Now let's see what else we can do with it. In this case, we are using the uh, Perl minus PE substitute this with that and with a option I. And there are lots of things out here happening on this line. What's happening is your minus P means uh, print each line after the expression is executed. So execute this expression on each line and print it. And then take these uh, star.i text files as a test.txt and when you change a file make a backup with a minus i means make a backup with a tilde lecture. So you get a the original file will be test.txt and the edit the, uh, will get edited and the test.txt tilde will be the backup of it. So Perl will edit it and keep a backup of the original. So here's the original file and uh, when we run this code what happens is it will change into this will change to that. How does it happen is we are running the command substitute and comma 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 the argument so s and you can use any op any delimiter this with that and i means case insensitive. So that means capital or small, it doesn't matter. It will become that. So it goes over each line, this file, this becomes, and this, this becomes that. That is a test, that is a test. Everything else remains the same. And afterwards you do a dir, t star, you get the new file. So how would you do it next? So you could put it in a bat file, everything and this is the old usage you probably don't need to do it anymore you said pearl did equal to wherever you keep your pearl and in that you keep a a bat file and the bat file is actually a pearl file so how does it work you say and this is a bat command uh, auto dem uh, that means it's a comment and the first thing it says go to end of pearl so it goes to end of pearl out here and here you call pearl on the pearl dir and the same file name again and the arguments for the arguments he gave so first time it runs as a bat file and the Perl uh, and the bat file will call Perl on itself and Perl will run this thing and in this case Perl thinks this is a comment uh, as a array and will ignore it then it will look for a argument it will say pattern and shift get a pattern or if there is no pattern or no pattern die die means exit asking the question no pattern print that pattern no pattern die and after it gets a pattern and this is a loop while loop over each line that means loop over the, the input lines and the dollar underscore is a variable where each line is saved while the loop is executing and it's an implicit variable so if there's nothing out here it means dollar underscore print dollar underscore if matching dollar underscore matches dollar pattern so dollar pattern is coming from here as a regular expression 
is compiled and m is a match operator if you skip it still it's a match operator and it will print all the matching lines so then if you run it it says no pattern because it didn't give any pattern shift and there's no pattern so it died and in the second case you give a pattern that and then you say the file name so it will so the pattern will get this that will become a pattern and then it goes over texture uh, this uh, operator gets the line text.txe it goes over the line and prints that that you could even pipe uh, cat text.txe to the grep0 that okay so Perl has a few data types and data types are decided by the first character of the variable name scale also have dollar in front of it most of the time you have to put dollar unlike bash or uh, you need to put a dollar on both sides left hand side and right hand side it could be a string integer floating point number and there many more now so you can say dollar name equal to double quotes last name comma first name double quotes so anything inside double quote is interpolated that means it is a variable it will try to fill in the value of dollar last name if it's defined before and dollar first name is another variable so this will get filled in and then dot dot is a concatenate and dollar id is integer it will get incremented every time you call it and it's concatenated integer link concatenated the name and second one is a uh, variable type is a auto auto at is a uh, array it's indexed by numbers so you say auto names and then you use parent, uh, round parenthesis john mac so it's the same as name 0 and name 1 is john and mac ok so it's an array of two strings and single quotes means don't interpolate just leave it as it is and a third really useful uh, type is a associative array or hash table hash map is indexed by any object usually strings or it could be integers anything you want and in this case what you can do is a uh, percentage telephone number is equal to a, a, a array which is also a hash map john is mapped to 124 mac is mapped to 2347 and the fourth type is a subroutine a function you say ampersand in front of it you can also say sub sub double is a definition and when you call it you can say ampersand double if you leave it out also Perl will figure out by the parenthesis you're making a function call so x is the argument and y is the output the output of it goes into y and you can pass variable by textual name rather than by value or reference by using star variable we'll not be looking at more of that and the most important thing Perl is that it has regular expressions the extended regular expressions and they've been having lots more than the original bash had and shell had so let's see what all the new features of the thing so the most important things in a variable uh, regular expression is the so in regular expressions there we look at the common uh, Perl 5 regular expressions and it has been extended many times so the simple ones are here they work even in Vim. If you want to learn regular expressions, you might want to use GVIM and play around out there also. So, a caret by itself means beginning of a line, anchoring. And dollar means the end of the line. So, it doesn't really need a character. It just matches with the beginning of the line or end of the, and end of the line. And question mark means one, zero or one copy, R or nothing. And star means zero or more copies. Plus means one or more copies and then there's a braces m to n you can say 1 comma 5 that means 1 to 5 times m to n times and there's also the the greedy and non greedy type they're not uh, shown in the slide and then bar means all r or s and then you can group parentheses using the parentheses so you can use it to refer later on as dollar n or backslash n and from 0 to 9 you can say backslash 1 that means the first match or second match dot matches any character except the new line and for alphanumeric characters you can just type the character a means a b means b and non alphanumeric they have special meanings for digits if you want to match any digit you say backslash d it matches 0 to 9 
and backslash double D no not double D backslash capital D matches not the digit and backslash W is a word character A to Z A to Z capital or underscore and if you use capital it means not a word character and if you want to have a word delimiter you put a word boundary backslash B and if you have a space or tab you can use backslash S to match a white space character and uh, an opposite of that would be backslash capital S not a space character and if you really need to literally match a character backslash you just put a second backslash in front of it for all these special characters if you put a backslash it loses a special meaning and if you want to put a octal number you just put a backslash zero and the octal value of it for the character this is for ASCII characters and if you have a set of characters you put it in square bracket and if you put a, a cap in front of the in the square brackets that means not in the set S okay so those are basic regular expressions and how do we use it so we look at some examples first so this matches books question mark means it matches book or books because the S can be optional the last character question mark this also is the same you can put a bar book or books and in this case ABC or XYZ followed by a digit ABC 0, ABC 9, XYZ 0 matches. In this case, it starts with an A and ends with an A and anything in between. Dot star means anything. 0 more of anything. So this matches plus or minus twice. Exactly two times. So it could be plus, 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 minus, minus, plus, minus, minus. This matches a word backslash W plus. That means some some alphanumeric word followed by something followed by that thing again in a string it, it so repeated in a string it could be part of a some b then a again it could be anything and this thing matches trailing spaces so spaces followed by end of line in this case you are looking for a sign followed by digits followed by a decimal point followed by some more digits and this is optional so it matches 0 1 2 3 minus 1 and floating point numbers and then you can use a word boundary if you really want to make sure that it starts and stops on a word boundary so backslash b that means it matches fish some word characters followed by space followed by whatever match before fish fish so it matches fish fish with more spaces also matches fishes because there's no backslash b out here but does not match fish his because it's a, it has to start with a fish and the second thing has to match again so if you want to let's look at more usage of regular expressions so substitute is where you use a lot of like matching and substitute is where you use a lot of regular expressions you say substitute slash slash dot star with nothing so you're deleting slash slash followed by anything if you are saying and then if no C please comments this is a variable this variable is set do this on the dollar underscore remove the C plus this comment and if you're looking for something like assert i equal to 1 this is a bug in the C code you're trying assigning i to 1 instead of saying i equal equal to 1 so how do you test for that and match if match backslash uh, starting of a word assert ending of a word followed by not any of these signs so something and then equal to and not a equal to so there's a single equal to in the assert then you warn saying assert warning warn means it will print on a standard error and whatever the string and the line it will get printed so you can look at it and see decide whether it's a bug or not there's a longer example in this case for i equal to 1 i less than 10 j plus plus so in this case i and j is a bug because it should be i out here in this case you are using a multi line regular exp extended regular expression single line regular expression you are looking for match from here to here for followed by space followed by a bracket this bracket and ending with this bracket because the backslash removes a special meaning then looking for 
spaces ignoring the spaces and looking for something that's not a, a semicolon anything inside that equal to something so this is a variable name i equal to x and then i equal to less than or some operator some another expression and then semicolon this semicolon followed by another third variable name followed by incrementing or decrementing then you're checking if dollar two is not equal to dollar three the match two this is not equal to this or dollar two is not equal to this any print out a warning thing loop variables don't match you might want to print a line also so that people know which line it happened and line number is dollar dot and dollar underscore is a line so if you wanted to name rename files look at another example how do you do that so what you do is first you first thing normally in a script you define a uh, variable which gives a usage of your script you say this is a variable dollar usage from here to here is a string and end of the string say usage whatever your script name you can put dollar zero and then the first argument is how to rename the thing and then files are standard input an example would be you want to name your text file to back files you need to skip the, the dot by putting double backslash so you're saying f dot tech will get named to f dot back rename and rename tr that means lowercase the thing or rename remove all the zeros leading uh, extra zeros followed by a digit to uh, remove f004 to f0.4 it puts a dot out here and then you can also combine it in a pipe find dot uh, file type minus print and rename all the digits and multiply it by 5 so four, f4 becomes f20 and then you can have a variable thing where both equal to 1 turn on debugging and then you get operator 1 this is the operator shift or die usage you will print the screen if you don't give operator you can see how to use it then if there are no arguments you get it from standard input into argv argv is the all the arguments then you chop that means remove the new lines then for each argument you loop over the thing get the initial name evaluate the operator eval means whatever user is given the expression evaluate it on the dollar, the dollar underscore then the original name change to this thing if it change and if there's a there's a eval has a problem evaluating it will uh, die saying that okay failure something happened and if they're equal if there's no change just go to next line next if no change equal to and next if there's already a file name exists dollar underscore you can override that file just one one is a print saying that file exists don't override and you print that and you go to next line otherwise you rename dollar f to dollar underscore and you say print renamed whatever so let's look at another example in this case you're counting all matching words occurring in a file and this is a perl file with a minus w minus w is for printing warnings so you get the argument pattern or you print the warning thing word pattern and file it's like a grep you're counting words matching pattern then you inform the user what you're going to do so print is there you're printing the standard error and a string you're printing so the pattern will be interpolated from here then you go over each line you split the line into words into array of words then for each word in the, in the array of words you grab for the pattern pick the matching words and then you count so this is a hash map of word count and if there's a word for each word you count how many times it occurs in the list and you add the thing and eventually after you're done you sort the keys of the word count hash map by the count and print each word followed by how many times it occurs in the input okay let's look at another example to generate a cross reference of Perl variables and you say get an argument or get the argument if there's no arguments you die with the help message usage is Perl files and then what does it do so 
synopsis count all Perl variables in a file with line numbers of occurrence like a cross reference generator first your pattern is defined as a dollar percentage of hash followed by some characters that's a variable name then you start counting it and then first you get rid of comments hash followed by anything is a comment so you just you're not looking inside comments you substitute anything in the comment delete it then while the pattern matches in each line you do it multiple times on each line you get rid of the, uh, the word that you find this pattern and first you need to double quote the dollars with the dollars quoted in the word and then next unless the word occurs so first of all it, what in this case is doing is if the word is just three characters word matches three characters skip it then you count add the count of the word if the word is longer you count it so in this case unless the word is three characters or more you keep it not you skip it and unless unless it's not of if so if it's more, three or more characters you keep it otherwise you go to next and then you count the word and then you add is concatenate this is a concatenate to the word line where it occurred you add the line number then you finally after you done with all the input you print out the sorted words count and line numbers so you say for each word and word count print word word count and where it occurred well it's much easier if you actually run this code and let's look at a bigger regular expression another example where you try to remove c comments uh, slash star followed by comment followed by slash star but it can be multi-line so first thing you do is in your script dollar slash is undefined that means multi-line patterns will be there the whole file is read as a single as a single string read whole file as a one single thing then you want this is the expression regular expression from here to here you rep, uh, you're replacing this with dollar two and g means multiple times so the whole input is a single variable dollar underscore whole file replacing it then you print it so this is the code for doing a c this thing then we test it on this thing backslash star till this this is one c comment and this is inside a string you want to ignore this and this is also to be ignored but this we don't want to ignore we want to del delete this and we want to delete from here to here and this has to be ignored this is ignored so after we run the thing no comment so we get this x equal to 1 y equal to this is left alone but it is inside a string and z equal to uh, this thing is kept but everything else is deleted and how do you actually understand what's this regular expression doing so you can try to expand it first you can use minus the blue flag for warning and you can make it multi-line so it's a multi-line expression you're saying this is start of a comment slash stars star is a literal star not really there then not stars followed by s any number of stars followed by dollar one which is yeah, keep a track of this whatever you're printing as many times as possible not a slash not a star as many things as possible followed by stars as many as copies as you want and then you can repeat as many times as you want fo followed by a comment ends star slash there's a comment end or or the part two is this it is a string inside a string with a quoted string inside it with a with a not a not a co double quote till a double quote so this is a string or single quoted string with no single quotes inside this or a quoted backslash inside that backslash code is okay followed by new lines followed by any char non code character and whatever you substitute put back what match and do it globally multiple times and you can run it on to see in this case we are putting it back with parentheses around it you can see what is matching every time this is matching 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 so you get an idea what is matching for each thing and there's many more tricks for in Perl 
five the new versions to actually debug your regular expressions okay so that's about it for now